good as one in uh, London, the British Museum. But this is slightly different. Okay, well, this so is, yes, I mean, it's a different period. Yeah. I mean, so this is about 2,000 years, yeah. roughly speaking. Our uh, British Museum tends to be about three and a half thousand years ago, yeah. as is the gallery upstairs. Really? That's older? Yeah, that's older, yes. Mm -hmm. This is the Greco-Roman, which started 332, Alexander the Great, to the um, Christian era, about the 5th century AD. That explains the, how sophisticated the face paintings looked on some of the, the mummies. Well, you've got the Hellenistic style coming in. Uh, car, uh, sculpture, paintings uh, had learned perspective and shadowing. Yeah. You know, and all of those things. Mm -hmm. While the Egyptians were very stylistic in their art, very stiff, very formal. Uh, but of course, it was part of the hieroglyphs, which mm -hmm. was a form of writing as opposed to a form of art. What I find fascinating is how the language from hieroglyphs evolves into some of the uh, the, the later languages in the, in the region, and how that sort of evolves into Hebrew and Arabic, respectively. Well, I, I think those were running alongside in parallel. Were, were they? Yes, very much so. Um, so they weren't the derived The hieroglyphics from... were the pictorial, but there was a demonic uh, language, which was the written language also. Did you say demonic? Demonic. All oh, right. Yes, uh, which isn't as elaborate as the hieroglyphs, uh, much uh, smaller in detail. Um, but all two were used during the Egyptian era. And only the upper echelons of society, of course, could read and write, mm. not the populace. Mm. Uh, during the Greco-Roman times, of course, they used Greek. Uh, in fact, um, when the um, stone uh, was found with the three scripts on it uh, and the Rosetta Stone uh, with hieroglyphs, demonic and Greek, uh, Champollion, the French... Um, was able to find the code yeah, and decipher because it. in the Greek he could see one word being repeated five times and also that hieroglyph and that demonic sign was there and he realised that it was all the same words but in three different scripts. So they had a script specifically for what, the, the, their belief in the demon realm, the realm of the demons? Is that, is that what no. you mean by demonic script? No, no, no. no, no. Oh, I've got it completely wrong. Yeah, no, no. Um, the, the script uh, was just a name given. There was nothing to do. They believed in a great deal of magic in the ancient religion of um, Egypt, uh, <laughs> believing that anything that they thought of would happen, and especially children were brought up to believe that magic was part of the thing. But of course, to the ancient Egyptians, it was the afterlife that was important, not their everyday life, because yeah. that was very short. Maybe. Uh, you know, the afterlife was for eternity, so they believed. So do Egyptians in general, were they very superstitious in nature? Or yes, they were? very much so, yes. Maybe. Yeah, that's fascinating. Yes. Thanks. Mummification. Ancient Egypt. The ancient Egyptians believed in several rituals in order to reach the afterlife into the next world and achieve immortality. Death was seen as a temporary state and a dead person's spirit needed a body, so to preserve it, a process of mummification was used. This process, the quality of the mummification, varied depending on the person's status and wealth. The highest ranks in society got the best method of preservation after they died. Firstly, the body was washed in water and salt. The brain was then removed and discarded, using a hook through the nostrils. The body was then slit open and the organs were removed, except for the heart, which the ancient Egyptians believed would guide the person into the afterlife. The liver, lungs, intestines, and stomach were kept and placed in four canopic jars, one for each organ. These jars each featured a lid sculpted as one of the sons of Horus. Hapi, who protected the lungs, Duamutef, the stomach, Imseti, the liver, and Kebesenef, the intestines. The body was then filled with myrrh, cassia, and other spices, then sewn up together and packed with a special salt called natron for up to 70 days which prevented the flesh from rotting. After this process, the body was shriveled and dehydrated, 
so the embalmers would stuff the empty body with sawdust and linen to bring it back to its original shape, oil the skin to soften it, and add false eyes and a wig to make the corpse more lifelike. A resin was used to cover the body to prevent mold, and then the whole corpse was wrapped in layers of linen bandages. A face mask was made to look like the person, then was placed on the head of the corpse, and the body was placed into a wooden case, or if the person were rich, a stone sarcophagus. Mummies would be buried with items they might have needed for the afterlife, including jewelry, clothes, furniture, even pet cats and dogs who were mummified as well to keep them company. The less expensive method for the middle classes, or those who wish to avoid the expense, involved the corpse being injected with oil taken from cedar trees, liquefying the internal organs. It was then packed with natron for up to 70 days and given back to the family. The Egyptian embalmers were so skilled that even today, people that were mummified thousands of years ago still have some recognizable features. Subscribe for more history videos, and don't forget to click the notification bell to find out when a new episode is out.